When Stephanie and Todd Lanier moved to their 1970s home, her past met their future. It was my childhood home, and I lived here when I was seven, and then moved out, of course, and then we moved back in three years ago. And so we've been working on the yard ever since. Back then, you know, landscaping meant a row of shrubs, and that was pretty much it. Um, a row of pittosporums or a hedge. And that's really not my idea of landscaping. I wanted flowers, so we took out a lot of the shrubbery. Her blog, Rambling Wren, depicts some of their journey to move past 1973 garden style. I just started with the back fence because that's mostly what we see. And with our floor to ceiling windows in the living room, it's nice that we can look out at it. And so I just started with sections that were more visible to me. We just worked in little sections. We didn't try to take it all on at once. It was too big of a project and it still is. We're still working on it. But if you just take a little section at a time and build a bed and make it the way you like it, and then you can move on from there. That's what we did. We still have a long way to go, but we've accomplished, I think, a lot in a short period of time. Some of their challenge was finding plants that worked in part shade. I walked it in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evenings, and I would walk it with my husband. We would come out on the weekends and we would walk the perimeter and just try to find the spots where the sun was or dappled shade so I would know what to plant and I'd have in my mind what plant would go well in that spot. I still walk it. It changes with the seasons and, you know, with the leaves falling from the oak trees and the trees have gotten bigger so there's a lot more shade and I keep trying to find the sun and I've noticed there's a lot of microclimates even within one bed you know you can have a full sun spot and just a couple feet down you've got a dappled shade situation like the plant will tell you where it wants to be it'll show you where it wants to go so if it's leaning into the sun that means it needs more sun and I've dug up several plants we both have and moved them or if it's kind of hiding back into the shade, it means I want more shade. In confirmed sunny enough spots, Stephanie grounds the present with new favorites like bottle brush. First, Todd worked on the soil that needed an update too. We knew we needed soil because it's mainly just rock. It's really, I think it's rock holding some soil in. And so we decided that we needed to just kind of replace all the dirt. So the first thing I did was start digging out beds and I sifted through all the beds just to kind of get all the dirt out, throw the rocks away, keep the, what dirt was there there, and then uh, just amend it with, you know, a rice hole soil that's got, you know, some compost in it and some straw and just a bunch of different stuff in it. And then also on top of that, started layering uh, manure compost just to kind of help build the rich richness up and then layer it with leaves. And we've gone back in, we've had beds that have been in for a year or two and have gone back in and, and dug through it and it's just this nice black soil. And plus the vegetable garden was something that I really wanted. We enjoy cooking and so for me it was just a natural extension. It was really rocky soil back there and so I wanted to get all the rocks out because I wanted to kind of level it because it, there was a little bit of a slope to it. There was a previous garden that was there, there was a shed that was there and so there was a foundation I had to, to knock out. Then I put in the, uh, I guess, the plumbing for all the for all the drip irrigation, and then I put in the beds. I wanted different shapes and sizes of beds so that we could have, you know, if something ran, and it's still not done yet. I'd like to do some hardscaping around all the beds because right now it's cedar, and I know eventually it's going to rot out. So if we can put in some more permanent, you know, stones around each of the beds, that would be ideal. We don't use any chemicals. We don't spray. Um, everything's organic. There's no chemicals on the grass or the lawn or on any of the flowers. All the fertilizer's organic. I'm really big about not using any chemicals in the yard. I think it's harmful for the bees and the butterflies and the birds. They do safeguard some plants, like strawberries, with a handmade shield of hardware cloth and lumber. Mostly, their update is to bring back wildlife. I love anything that the birds or the butterflies or the bees like. I pretty much plant for that specific reason. I call it the three bees. So I love anything that attracts them is what I want in my yard. I want them here. So it's really nice to go outside and see all that taking place. When we first moved in, we didn't see a lot of bees. And now that we have the bee specific plants, they are happy. 
Mason bee houses attract these non-stinging pollinators. They were amazed about how fast winged friends found the recirculating fountain. To conserve water in the garden, Todd installed efficient irrigation. So I tapped into the main, the main water line and started building my irrigation system. And I you know, figured out where I wanted beds at, how many lines I would need, and then we'd kind of put the main line for that zone somewhere and then just tap into it through, a, through kind of a drip line. And so everything has got you know, micro drips or micro sprayers or micro soaker hoses that efficiently water right at the root level. So you really never see anything being watered. It's just watering down below. They've removed a lot of grass and created ripples with the rest. It gets watered once a week right now. It's happy. I just put on, um, I guess, yards and yards of compost this fall. And I think that also helps the root system as well. But you know, it, it's nice to look at, you know, when you have grass up against a bed, instead of, you know, grant, there's, pla there's a time and place for granite, and I think there's a time and place for grass. It keeps the yard cooler. You know, it's already 100 degrees in the summertime, or north of that, and so why add another 10 degrees to your backyard with, you know, granite compost? It's just nice to look at, too. And all the critters come through and dig through and they get their meals as well. You know, we've got possums that eat the grub worms and birds that are eating worms and the squirrels are planting uh, the, I guess the, uh, the acorns and then digging the acorns up. So they're my little aerators at times. Um, but I wish, what I'd like, if I could train them to go up into the trees and pull them off, I guess the moss balls out, that would be ideal. Yes, yeah, so we haven't trained the squirrels to do that yeah. yet, but that would be nice. Because they're very nimble. If they could just go up there and grab them and throw them down to me, that'd be awesome. He's really big into using the oak leaves as mulch. I know a lot of people like to bag them and, you know, get rid of them, but it's really nice because they break down and it just gives the soil nutrients and the birds love to go through the leaves and look for different insects and worms. In this new chapter of the family home, Stephanie's indeed found her roots. My grandmothers were both really big into gardening. They had beautiful yards and beautiful flowers. And as a child, I remember playing in those yards. So I'm imprinted in my mind with those gorgeous flowers and just their love of gardening. I have some of her plants that are probably 30 plus years old that are still going. They've survived drought and freezes and it's just amazing plants. So it's a really nice connection between my past and my present and when I look at those plants it kind of reminds me of them. Mm -hmm.